Hello everybody, this is Hammerstrecker here. Today I've got the latest in the Shockwave series from Mossberg. It's the 590S. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis X and Core Belts. Link to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links. It will often save you money, never will cost you any additional money, and helps the channel. Thank you. The 590S expands on the Mossberg Shockwave line in a couple ways. First off, the 590S is available in a regular shotgun, not the Shockwave, but a regular shotgun with a stock. But there's also now two barrel lengths available in the Shockwave. A 14.375, which of course everybody's going to call a 14 inch barrel, and this longer critter, which is an 18 and three quarter, or 18 and a half, and you can see it's empty, an 18 and a half inch barrel which probably everybody will call the 18. So you'll probably hear a reference to a 14 and an 18, but there actually are fractional length differences. The 18 inch, 18 and a half inch barrel you see here adds a little bit of length to both the barrel, of course, and the magazine tube. So in this particular variant, which is chambered for both three, or all three of three inch, two and three quarter, and one and three quarter inch shells, you get five, six, and nine. So five with the three inch, six with the two and three quarter, and nine with the one and three quarter shorties. And in the 14 inch barrel variant, you get four, five, and eight. So basically it's one more round of each type in this one. Keeping in mind that shotgun shell lengths aren't as precise as pistol caliber and rifle round lengths. They do vary a little bit. So sometimes you may get one fewer round because it's a quarter inch too short for that particular round to fit. But in general, especially with the shorties, nine rounds in a fairly short compact shotgun is pretty decent. And you might wonder, well, those shorties are going to be less powerful. Well, yeah, they are. But this is really a home defense type weapon, a personal defense up close. This isn't something you're going to go hunting geese with. So they're plenty powerful enough at the distances that you're intending to operate something like this to get the job done, and it makes the recoil a lot more manageable. I personally would not want to fire a three inch magnum out of this. It just, it would not be fun. But with the shorties, it is actually very manageable, very comfortable, easy to handle. And in the range footage, we were shooting both two and three quarter buckshot and one and three quarter slugs, and it was very manageable. You could really tell the difference between the buckshot and the slugs because the buckshot was a two and three quarter. And you could, you could tell, but it was still very manageable. Of course, the real attraction of this is the bird's head grip. So you don't have the length and everything that's associated with the stock. And there is a sling mount point on them. When these first came out, some of the very early ones didn't have this in the original 590. Then the one that we previously showed on the channel had one. And now, as far as I know, all of them, both the 590 and the S, have that sling mount. The fire control group on this is polymer. You, there is a 590 fire control group that is steel, or actually it's an alloy, but you, uh, you can't really swap them out, and I'll show you why when I get later in the video. But on the other, the 590 that you showed on the channel, we did swap it out with the metal one, but that's not an option here. Like all of the Mossberg 500 series, the receiver is alloy, and all of the internal important parts are steel, bolt and everything else, and the elevator and everything. And like all of the 500s, the 590 series, you have the ability to put a rail on it if you choose, and they have the classic Tang safety. These work really well, they're ambidextrous, they're easy to work with. A lot easier than like the bolt style that you see on a lot of other things. Big disadvantage to this type of safety on a gun like this one is it can be a little bitey. So when you grab a hold of this, if your hand kind of slides up, it's easy to get kind of bit by the edge of this. That's fairly easy to fix. Uh, talon grip, which we put on the other one, which was a custom wrap we made out of a talon bulk wrap. They now make a custom wrap for this. That gives you a little more grip on it. Kind of keeps your hand up away from the safety. And also with the one and three quarters, even with the smoother grip, it's easier to keep hold of it. So it's kind of a less of an issue at that point. You can put a rail on it, put a laser or a light, whatever you see fit. It does have a bead sight all the way at the front. And that bead sight allows you to sight, but there's nothing at the rear to sight with. And this, you could even see from the range footage, is very cumbersome to try to use the sights. 
Now you will notice that the form that I was using when I was shooting at the range was suboptimal. Well, it's, it's an indoor range and they have rules related to hip shooting. I did do a little hip shooting at the very beginning, but it, that hip shooting was not very accurate. So a, a laser of some sort might be very useful on this gun, even though it is a shotgun, simply because you're typically not going to shoot this like you would a regular shotgun up where you're sighting down the barrel up to the bead. You're going to be kind of just picking this thing up, aiming it in a direction. And even at short ranges, that's not very accurate. So it does have what they call a corn cop grip. It's got some serrations on it to get a hold of and this strap. And this strap's kind of important, especially on the 14 inch variant, because you know the 14 inch variant, the barrel's ending about here. It would be very easy when you go forward to have your finger up in front of the barrel. So don't take the strap off. You know, it kind of looks weird, but it is well done and it does keep your hand from getting up past the slide and up into potentially where the business end of this thing is. On the shorter version, this will be kind of truncated about here. So what's different with an S? So this one is unloaded, of course. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it. Close both of them. And a couple of things you'll see. One, the tongue on the elevator is shorter on the original one, longer on this one. You can see that kind of sticks further up into the bolt. So what I'm referring to is this part right here. Notice it's much longer. What would happen on the original one without the adapter is the shell would get behind that and to basically fall out and either fall out or get hung up in the action. This prevents that from occurring. The other thing that you'll see that's different is on the front of the trigger, there's this little bumper. This is both a recoil buffer as well as kind of also in guiding the shell into place. And according to Mossberg, there's also some changes to the bolt slide. So converting a 590 to a 590S currently is not an option. And of course, the lack of that component on the regular 590 fire control group kind of prevents you from just swapping out the steel fire control group. Now, I did go to the steel on this one simply because it was available, but Overall, I've never heard of one of these trigger guard things breaking. It's just with a handheld one, especially a pistol grip, there's a little more stress on it. I misspoke when I said that the other version of this is steel. It's not. It's an alloy, but it's not polymer. And when I mentioned not seeing any of these break, I assume if you probably get into some of the really crazy tactical stuff, it might be possible to break this. But you know, it I just did it because I could and a little bit of additional strength but I will leave this as it is until a future point comes up where they possibly enhance the regular version of it or make the 590S version available. Beyond that, everything on this is pretty much the same as any other Mossberg 500, my 590 series shotgun. Here's your bolt release. You would press this to be able to open it when it's closed and hasn't been fired. So if you either wanted to empty it or for whatever other reason, other than that, there's really not much controls on a shotgun. You got the safety on the tang, you got the bolt release, and you got the noisy lever. Beyond that, really, they're fairly simple and straightforward. The overall length is 26 or more inches on these, so they're not super, super small, but when you eliminate the stock, it does make it a little bit more easily moved around for, for a home defense scenario. You don't have that extra foot or so sticking out. And they weigh a little over five pounds, depending on which barrel version you get of it. The longer barrel, of course, is gonna be a little bit heavier, but they're right in the five pound territory. They're very manageable, and especially with the shorties, they manage recoil quite, quite well. One of the things I didn't mention when I was talking about why you might want a laser, and yes, you can use this bead sight because you could bring it up to your face, but I, when I was shooting this with the sight and I had it up where I could actually use the sight, one of the things I was very focused on is that not meeting my face. In a self-defense scenario, of course, you're gonna be more focused on what's going on in front of you. And it is possible that if you're not just doing it just right to get hit in the face with the business end of this, which is where a laser and not necessarily having to line it up in front of your face is really optimal. These have an MSRP of 643, so they're reasonably priced. And, and of course, Mossberg recently, well not so recently, you know, getting into the pistol realm and really doing a good job of it, you could actually now have your entire defensive suite be Mossberg. 
this MT MC2C, depending on which version of it you get, you can get up to 16 rounds in the extended mag. So you got a pistol, and you can have up to nine rounds, depending on which ammo you use, in a shotgun. So it's possible your nightstand, your concealed carry, your everything else can now be Mossberg. So it's kind of interesting that Mossberg has gone from really full-size shotguns only, moved into true PDW type shotguns, things that are really useful for that. So I was going to try to do that nice and smooth, but this thing's too long, it was hitting the table, so I just had to stop and position it. But you'll see, it's a shotgun, so it's a smooth bore barrel, it's not particularly polished. There's probably a little bit of residue from last time I shot it, even though I did clean it. But it's a well done, well formed barrel. And one of the other characteristics of the barrel is that it's kind of heavy at the front and then it tapers down to a relatively streamlined barrel. But their walls are nice and thick. So these are barrels that are designed to be able to shoot slugs, double lot, and it is cylinder bore. Again, you're not going goose hunting with this thing. This is a short range gun. So cylinder bore for the purpose of what these are designed to do is more than adequate. The other side of it, which I haven't really shown, there's not much going on, it's pretty well smooth. And you've just got just a couple of the pins and then of course the rest of the gun. So these aren't very interesting on the other side. There's really no interesting features on it or anything else other than of course on this side you can see the bolt release. And when it, the elevator you can see a little bit. Pretty, pretty straightforward gun. It's a shotgun. They're simple. They're pretty easy to work with and pretty easy to live with. And the Mossbergs, the controls are well designed on them. So beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell to be notified. Check us out on Facebook, Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and now Rumble. And of course, Getter. Thank you.